Hey everybody, my name is Tom Balator and I am one of the community TAs for this iteration of 600X. And I'll tell you, over on the forum, on the Facebook page, there are a lot of people looking for help on problem number three in PSET 1. It's a tough problem. Um, it's a great problem, I think, but it's the sort of problem that can be overwhelming if you have very little or no programming experience. Much like me, two years ago when I first took this course, I almost gave up because of this problem. Um, but what I like to do in this video walkthrough is to help people like that in that situation feel a little bit less overwhelmed by perhaps helping you think about how to think about this problem. And for me, the most important step is to look at it from the professor's perspective or whoever's been making the, the problem's perspective. You've got a lot of material in week one. What are the key points? They want to be able to make sure that you understand those, are able to apply them good enough so that you are able to... Um, use these concepts in future weeks. So the four main concepts that you're going to need for this problem, I believe, are, first of all, and these slides are from the, the course notes, operations on strings. Strings are amazing. Non-scalar, you can do things in strings, right? So you can concatenate them, you can check their length, you can index them, you can slice them. This can be very important in this problem. Second, um, Boolean operations, we can compare. Um, you can check, for example, in the lecture, we took integers and floats, um, you know, was, let's say, 7 greater than 5, was 6 less than 4, true, false, um, ideas like that. But we can also do that with strings or elements of strings. So this is another important thing. Third, conditionals, you know, branches in the program. If a certain condition is true, then do something. Otherwise, do something else. This is going to be important. And then finally, Flow control. How do you deal with a case where you don't know the inputs before you get them? How many you're going to have to look through? You're not going to hard code that. Um, you're just going to want to have a flow control to do that. So all four of these are going to be very important to finding a solution, or at least for the solution that I found that I think works pretty well. So let's look at the problem itself one time quickly, and it's a very short problem, deceptively short. Assume S is a string of lowercase characters. Write a program that prints the longest string of S, substring of S, in which the letters occur in alphabetical order. And there's some other things written here, but that's really it, these two sentences. Looking for alphabetical substrings, the longest alphabetical substring in a given string. Now, if you were like me the first time going through here, this is overwhelming. It's where do you even begin, right? Um, and that's a lot of the questions we've seen on the forum. Well, my advice to you is to begin with some ridiculously trivial case that is possible and lets you get your foot in the door. So in this case, what I would do is let's, I would assume that let's say the grader is giving me a very simple string and only one, uh, a string that has only one character. I don't even have to check if it's alphabetical or not because there's only one. Um, let's go over to Python and see how that might work. So let's say the grader is giving you S is a string that has one element, one character in it, that's A. Well, the answer is really simple. All you have to do is simply print out, um, what was that phrase here? The longest substring in alphabetical order is colon. Let me copy that, go back here, paste that in. I'll end that quote, comma, and then S. So this syntax will get us, when we run it, an output that, well, no duh, the longest substring in alphabetical order is A. Of course, we knew that, but it's nice to be able to take some code, simple as it may be, and to come up with something that you know is a right answer. From this, what I would do is move on to a slightly more difficult case. Let's say I'm going to get a string with two elements, two characters in it. Let's say it's AB for the first case. Now, if I get AB, there's really nothing else I have to do here. Um, if I run it, well, it's going to print out the same thing. But you can see where I'm going with this. This could equally be BA. And if I run it, no, 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 that's not correct. This is not in alphabetical order BA. In this case, I'd like to have an answer according to the specification of just B. That would be the proper answer for this case. So, you know, after you've sort of played with this a little bit, I guess the next step is to think about, um, you know, how would you actually put or decide whether or not two 
characters in a two-character string are indeed in alphabetical order or not. And you know some some things that we need to think about right from the very beginning is how to index into a string. So let's use a print command here. Um, I will first of all, you've seen this in the lecture, let's say the zeroth element of s. Let's print that one out. Do you know what the answer to this is going to be? Hopefully you do. That's a. If we went for the oneth element, I guess that's really the second element, that should be a b. Say OK. Now the really interesting thing is that we can see into these strings with this slicing or this indexing. And not only that, but we're also able to do Boolean operations here. So let's say the s0, which is a in this case, we can do a conditional, not a conditional, a, a, a Boolean statement here for s0 is less than s1. Uh, is that true in this case? Is a less than b? Well, yeah, it is true. Um, if we had a case where the input string was b a, and you check that, no, it's false. So you can have these outputs comparing these things. So yeah, I mean, alphabetically, a is less than b, b is less than c, c is less than d, and so on. But let's go back here to this original string where we've got a, b. Um, this case holds, we get true. Now, that in itself is quite trivial. Um, we don't really get too much information from that. But what we'd like to do now is set up some sort of conditional where we have a robust solution for this two character string. And to do that, well, we need to have an if statement, right? So if, let's say, um, let me do this uh, properly, we got the parentheses. This, and I'm just going to copy this from here. Let's say that this zeroth element is less than the first element, which is the second one, of course. String start at zero. It sounds a little bit funny, right? If that's the case, then, yeah, just print this out as it is. Print out A, B. If that's not the case, else, excuse me, else, um, what would we print out? If a was not less than b, if that wasn't in alphabetical order, well, only the first zeroth element of the string would actually be in alphabetical order according to the specification. So in that case, we'd want to print um, s square bracket zero only. Okay, let's see. I think I got the syntax okay here. Let's run that. And uh, that prints true. Oh, no, that's not what I want here. What am I doing? I'm doing a silly thing here. I want to do this. I want to print out the actual um, case here, excuse me, which is right here. Not the case, but the, uh, the text here. There we go. And then um, put S in here. And then if not, then right here we put in the longest substring in alphabetical order is there, that should work. So yeah, in the case of AB, it prints out AB. Let's see, in the case of BA, it should print out just B. That's nice. How about in the case of AA? Is our implementation robust enough to handle that? And no, it's not. Think about that. Why would AA fail? That's in alphabetical order. Hint right here, we've got a less than sign. But actually, it's not that a is less than b, it's a is less than or equal to b or the one that follows it. So in this case, we can easily edit that to be less than or equal to, run that, and then we do get the proper output of aa. Now, that's just the basics of it. Now, the problem is we've not going to be able to do this for more than just two characters. If you've got three characters, what's going to happen? Well, at this point, you need to obviously set up some sort of looping mechanism. And one of the things we studied in a lecture was the for loop. So let's try a for loop here. So for i and index i in a range, well, that's the trouble. We really don't know what the range is. How many times do we want to iterate here? Well, you could say that the string in this case is two characters. So let's try to do this for two characters. So a range of two. That's wrong, but let's just go with that. Um, in that case, let's bring this up here. Okay. 
Whoa, that's the wrong thing to do. Sorry about that. What I want to do is delete this and then tab these over so it looks a little bit nicer. There we go. Um, we also have to change these indices here because if we don't have zero anymore, we have I for range two would be I zero and I one. Uh, and then right here, we're going to have I plus one. And then down here, we're also going to have I. So we've generalized it a bit, right? And hopefully by generalizing it, we'll also be able to solve it. Now, that's going to result in an error, what we've got here. And the error is string index out of range in line five. So basically in this line right here, somehow we've gone out of range. We've gone beyond what the actual length of the string is. And that's because this range here, we said it's two, so the values will be zero and one. And for this case, if it's one for SI, that would be one. This would be S second element, which is actually the third element. And there is no third element, so it doesn't make sense. So the computer is saying, no, that ain't going to happen. So actually right here, you got to think about that. And how would you refine that, take it down one, and see how that works? OK, that works fine. Let's try it on a different case, A, B. That also works. And let's try it with B, A. And hey, it works. B is what we wanted. Now, the thing you're going to have to do in this problem is instead of printing here, you're going to have to do something. And then if those conditions don't hold, you have to do something else here. Um, now, what you have to do here is obviously you have to keep track of the strings that are in alphabetical order. Um, you have to also test to see if one that comes is longer than ones that have come before it. And if they are, you have to count that as your longest string. That is a little bit tricky. Um, if you have questions about that, you can look on the forum. You can PM us. Um, we can look through your code if you can't get it. But that idea right there, um, the hint I would give you is that when you're trying to keep track of those alphabetical strings is that you don't have to put all the weight, all the burden on a single string to keep track of things. You can spread it over a few strings, perhaps. Okay, think about that. Um, and once you finish this, what you're going to need to do is, of course, report this result, which is print. Um, and then what are we doing here? Let me paste that in. And then you're going to put in, you know, your output whatever you've been storing it as. Uh, who knows what the name of that is. But once you're able to do this, um, that will be the problem. So it's actually quite short. I think mine was like 13 lines. Um, some people are saying much shorter than that. They're using probably other libraries and things. Um, some people are talking 30, 40 lines, and that's fine at this stage. But um, hopefully this gives you some hints. If you have any other questions, let us know on the forum. Uh, we have an unhangout um, Saturday. We also have a few more days of chances to email and PM and all those good things. So hang in there. This is a tough problem.